Why do people take pro-hormones? The real question is, what are pro-hormones? We often have to compare this to something simple to give a general idea. So let's look at amino acids. For example, phenylalanine can be converted to tyrosine. Tyrosine can be degraded or converted to the neurotransmitter dopamine. Tyrosine can be defined as a precursor to a neurotransmitter. So amino acids, pro-hormones, have what we call a pathway. Look at pro-hormones. If a person can take, that can be converted into, let's just say, testosterone. Now he or she is not taking testosterone, potentially taking a precursor to testosterone. Question, is pro-hormones dangerous? Well, the answer is not simple, simply for the fact, let's just say the pro-hormone is then converted into testosterone. So if we are manipulating that delicate system the body has a good way of maintaining what I would like to refer to as homeostasis. When he or she discontinues the use, especially for men, you will experience different side effects because side effects vary from person to person as do results. So what could happen? Well, some men reported, well, they can't get their dick hard. How do you avoid these side effects when you're younger around the ages of 18 to maybe 25 the last thing you want to do is mess up that delicate hormonal system so therefore to use whatever agent and not know the appropriate dosage in addition when somebody discontinues the use of pro hormones or whatever agents improperly he or she will report a crash-like feeling. It's kind of like when you stop smoking or stop using stimulants. You feel kind of crappy is the best way to describe. And some of the side effects potentially could be irreversible. However, there's still question to that. Now, I cannot tell you how many young guys contact me between the ages of 20 to 25 and they state, hey, I've taken this pro-hormone and I cannot get sexually aroused, my dick can't get hard. And I say, well, you dumbass, where did you purchase this from? And he or she basically states, purchased from like whatever online black market. And I said, do you even know what you're purchasing? So sadly, he or she may not even be taking a pro-hormone. They could be taking something totally different and not even know what it is. Just to mention, some of these pro-hormones were actually banned. So that is one of the reasons why people are going online to purchase. Now, how do you avoid the actual side effects? Do not abuse. And if you're taking something that is either illegal or banned, make sure you're taking the actual stuff at the correct dosage. So again, if you're a young fuck between the ages of 20 to 29, do not be stupid and say, hey, I want to be like the pro bodybuilders. <laughs> Sadly, I know some young people who actually abuse pro hormones and had to go to an endocrinologist for support. Usually a hormone replacement therapy is applied. Lab values may indicate the level of certain hormones in the body. HCG is commonly used. It is human chorionic gonadotropin, a peptide hormone, and it stimulates the gonads the ovaries and women and testes and men. I wanted to take time out of my day to not only educate myself, but you as well. I just wanted to mention, when you think of hormones, steroid hormones, it's coming from different places. Well, to be more specific, let's consider testosterone. For men, let's consider the testes. There is something called the cells of Leydig, and testosterone is released, secreted. Now, let's consider insulin, because everyone seems to be shooting this stuff up. Where does insulin come from? Now, we have to think of our organ, our pancreas, beta cells. Then, insulin is released. Now, I'm simplifying this, but I wanted to give a visual. Now, because we're talking about insulin, this is commonly taken among bodybuilders. It has anti-catabolic and anabolic properties. And usually, bodybuilders take this with conjunction to something else. So usually, they're not taking it alone. Because what usually happens is, well, if you think about how insulin works. Now, with a bodybuilder, usually he or she's goal is to increase glycogenesis that means producing glycogen and storing usually in the liver and muscle now the anti-catabolic is well they want to prevent protein breakdown i think that is degradation okay so they want to preserve protein depending on all things he or she may retain fat because there's a decreased chance of gluconeogenesis now this deals with metabolism so let's consider the thyroid gland 
Has anybody ever heard of T3? Also called triiodone thionine. Well, think about it. I mentioned homeostasis. It's a system, just like anything else. Who abuses T3 or uses it? Well, among female bodybuilders, it's involved in growth, metabolism, just to name a few. And if one can manipulate that system, well, what would the results be? Maybe it would increase metabolism. So some people actually compare this to testosterone and say, well, with T3, you're not going to have the same side effects as you would with taking testosterone. So women tend to use this because of that, possibly. Dehydroepiandrosterone. Now let's consider DHEA. And we have to think of that precursor in the pathway. People who use DHEA hope that it will be a precursor to possibly testosterone. So that leaves us here. Now, I know you people are used to seeing testosterone in this form. It's actually a steroid hormone, considered a male hormone. That is why when women take it, they see an increase in muscle mass, bone mass, and of course, facial hair. <laughs> what happens when he or she takes it? in excess. Well, women, of course, will have enlargement of the clitoris. So it resembles a small penis as defined by some people. I'm confusing myself. When a male discontinues the use and if he abused the actual steroid hormone, well, unfortunately, he may experience testicular atrophy. Yeah! Simplistically, when we consider this whole hormonal system, it's messed up. And as I discussed previously, the testes, the testicles, the cells of Leydig, the release of testosterone, when one has an exogenous form, agent, testosterone, injected intramuscularly, where the actual free testosterone can circulate, the system is confused. And it basically says, well, I don't naturally have to secrete, release testosterone. So the testes, as a result, may atrophy. <coughs> and that sucks. Now this is popular among a lot of old-time bodybuilders. Anyone care to wager a guess? HGH, also referred to as human growth hormone somatotropin a peptide hormone now my attempt here is to compare how one would inject insulin versus human growth hormone so i'm just mainly going to talk about how insulin is injected just to show the differences i hope this makes sense where are the injection sites near certain fatty areas of the body usually where the obliques are as they would call the love handle area now with human growth hormone there's like a debate of whether to do it i am intramuscularly or into subcutaneous tissue and i know this may sound kind of scary but usually bodybuilders experiment they mess up by injecting odd areas of the body there are some bodybuilders who inject insulin intramuscularly. I want to talk about HGH, human growth hormone, because it's been around for years and it's commonly used among athletes. Well, we have to think about what does it actually do? So let's consider the increase in muscle mass, decrease in fat mass. So what does that all mean? I like to look at metabolism. It's called gluconeogenesis. So I often think, okay, metabolism, the utilization of adipose tissue, and of course, it also plays a role in protein synthesis. And at this point, we have to think of growth. Usually, when I state that, I get the response of, oh, you mean muscle growth? No, I mean your organs, your facial structure, your overall bone structure as well, your hands. Look up the definition of acromegaly. This deals with the pituitary gland. Usually a non-cancerous tumor is bound, causing stimulation and secretion in excess of growth hormone. Just as a side note, the pituitary gland also controls the production and release of several different hormones, including growth hormone. So for years, people have been asking me if I take estrogen blockers. I refer to it as an aromatase inhibitor. So this pathway demonstrates how aromatase inhibitor works. So simplistically, let's look at the pathway. We see 
certain fates of what can occur. So it's doing as it sounds. It is inhibiting the conversion to estrogen, possibly increasing the level of testosterone or maintaining a certain level. Now, before I continue, I want to mention one herb, and it's called Pesiflora incarnita, containing an actual flavonoid called Crisine. Pesiflora incarnita could be used as a natural alternative to drugs, treating hormone-sensitive cancers, and may act as an aromatase inhibitor, often described as an estrogen blocker. Now, this is an interesting one. Stanozolol, also known as Winstrol, described as a synthetic version of anabolic steroids derived from dehydrotestosterone. Now, some of you may have heard of Dianabol and Enadrol. Now, this one is an interesting one because when you think you hear it all, you really have not. Some of you may have heard of the drug Trimulone, and it's kind of funny because it's considered a powerful injectable anabolic steroid. It is often used on animals, of course, to increase their body mass and appetite. Now, there was a story that came out previously of a female bodybuilder who actually injected herself with this. It kind of went to hell in a handbasket. Oh my God. Experienced a lot of masculine characteristics. Facial hair, deep in voice, thicker jawline, enlargement of the clitoris. So let's just sum it up here. Now this actual drug has anabolic properties and I'll explain briefly. Reports state it actually increases the IGF which stands for insulin growth factor. Now IGF or these proteins are, how would you say, similar to insulin growth factors, similar to insulin-like growth factors, and it triggers different cellular responses. Now the binding property for the androgen receptor is greater than testosterone. And once metabolized, this actual drug may increase the level of nitrogen uptake actually by the muscles, leading to the increased rate of protein synthesis, decreasing the rate of muscle breakdown, which is considered catabolism. Now let's talk about anabolic steroids, also called as anabolic androgenic steroids, AAS. Now when we consider anabolic steroid, we have to think of the actual structure like a cyclic ring and similar effects to testosterone in the human body as it will increase protein within cells and so we have to think about the human muscles now some people report the therapeutic benefits and also refer to it as a medicine to stimulate bone growth and of course appetite there are benefits to steroid hormones like in HIV patients you know there are reasons why these different agents are used in the body so the duration of this video is long, but I wanted to hit on the basics of anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and show pathways that demonstrate. Now I know there are countless videos that are sent to me on a regular basis of people giving advice on pro-hormones, hormones, steroid hormones, supplementation, and even this video is simplified. But I wanted to educate to my best ability, so I hope this video was helpful. If you have any thoughts, please contact me. Thank you.